Hello everyone. Today we're continuing our deep dive of Richard Dawkins and Yan Wong's book, The Ancestor's Tale. In this episode, we're going to discuss the evolution and radiation of cichlids. So, let's jump right in. Cichliformes is the ray finned fish order of cichlids and their relatives, and this order divides into two families, Folidichthyidae and Cichlidae. The former family contains a single species, the convict blenny, Folidichthys leucatania, which is a marine eel-like fish, but we are concerned with the latter family here. Cichlidae is one of the most speciose families of vertebrates, containing at least 1,600 freshwater species that range from South America and a few Caribbean islands to Africa to Madagascar to India and Iran. On the basis of this distribution, many researchers have argued that Cichlidae existed prior to the breakup of Gondwana, and as the continents drifted apart, they carried their local cichlid populations with them. This is called the vicariance model. In general, vicariance models explain organismal distribution in terms of continental drift, with tectonic movements separating formerly continuous, or nearly so, populations. In other words, the continents move while the populations living on them stay more or less stationary in their respective land masses. In contrast to the vicariance model is the dispersal model, where the biogeographical distribution is the result of organisms immigrating from one place to another. This is the model that explains the biodiversity of the Galapagos and Madagascar, organisms immigrated to these islands from South America and Africa, respectively. For cichlids, that would mean they traveled from one continent to another via a saltwater intermediate. So, given that cichlids are nearly all freshwater inhabitants, though many can tolerate brackish and even saltwater for short times, and the land masses they currently inhabit were conjoined in the past, Researchers, reasonably, hypothesized that cichlids must have spread across the continents by connected freshwater systems. Based on that, the last common ancestor of extant cichlids must have lived upwards of 150 million years ago, since that was when all the Gondwanan continents were still connected. However, the oldest known cichlid fossil, currently Plesioheros from the Eocene 46 million years ago of South America, substantially postdates the breakup of Gondwana. Further, no Mesozoic or Cenozoic fossil cichlids are known from Australia, another piece of Gondwana, which would corroborate the vicariance model. Of course, one could argue, and indeed some have, that the fossil record is massively incomplete, so paleontologists are dealing with a very limited data set. This is true, however, there are fish fossil deposits in Australia dating to the relevant time periods but no cichlids are known from those deposits. These two data points would hint in favor of the dispersal model, but the clincher would be genetic data. Can researchers pin down when exactly the common ancestor of all cichlids must have lived based on genes? In 2013, Friedman et al. used a data set of 10 protein-coding nuclear genes across 158 fish species, 89 cichlids and 69 non-cichlids, finding that the common ancestor of cichlids and the convict blenny lived 107 million years ago, and the common ancestor of all modern cichlids lived just 65 to 57 million years ago, the early Paleocene, which again, long postdates the breakup. In 2018, Irisari et al. used a dataset of 533 loci obtained from 149 species. Their results indicate that the last common ancestor lived between 176 and 121 million years ago, and that the African and American cichlids diverged between 144 and 99 million years ago. These dates do fit the vicariance model. More recently in 2020, estimates provided by Matt Shiner et al. traced the origin of the cichlid stem lineage to 87.3 million years ago, and the last common ancestor to 76.2 million years ago. 
This would again mean that crown cichlids arose substantially after Gondwana had split, so the dispersal model more accurately reflects reality. We will discuss in the Velvet Worm's tale how such estimates are found, but for now, we will take these dates from the most recent study at face value. Proponents of the vicariance model have pointed to what they consider a major issue with dispersal. Long-distance saltwater distributions for predominantly freshwater fish are highly unlikely. How then could the ancestors of South American cichlids have spread there from Africa? As it happens, large freshwater rivers can create plumes of freshwater across the top of saltwater, generating shallow corridors of brackish water that could potentially allow largely freshwater, though brackish-tolerant, organisms to disperse across saltwater corridors. Indeed, this is what happened with Newton's grassland frog, Tychodina newtoni, who used freshwater plumes generated by the Congo River to disperse to Sao Tome. Now let us look at the phylogeny of Cichlidae. In order of divergence, the first two lineages that split from all the other cichlids are Etroplinae and Tychochrominae. Etroplinae split from the others about 76.2 million years ago. This includes three genera, with some 16 species, which are found in India, Sri Lanka, and Madagascar, unfortunately many of which are threatened. Tychochrominae split from the others 68.7 million years ago, this group comprises about 14 species, all of which are found in Madagascar, and the majority are threatened as well. Next, we see a major split between the African cichlids, Pseudocrinolabrinae, and the South American cichlids, Cichlinae. These two diverged from one another about 62.1 million years ago during the Paleocene Epoch. The American group contains about 120 species, while the African group is, by far, the most diverse, including more than 1,100 species. It makes sense that the same subfamily would be found in places today as distant as India and Madagascar because these landmasses were the last to split apart from each other in their tectonic journey. In fact, since Madagascar and India did not separate until about 70 million years ago, both the common ancestor and the first fork in the cichlid tree occurred while the two were conjoined. This could imply that the cichlid common ancestor lived on the combined India-Madagascar landmass, then dispersed to Africa, and then finally dispersed to South America. Possibly, cichlids are descended from a marine fish that colonized India-Madagascar, but unfortunately, we have no fossil record of such an ancestor at present. For now, this leaves researchers with some very intriguing questions. For example, why were the islands or continents only colonized once? And if the cichlids did indeed have to cross some saltwater bodies, why have African cichlids not seeded Madagascar multiple times? To answer both, it is possible that mere chance resulted in cichlid dispersal from one island or continent to another. Perhaps the likelihood of a cichlid population dispersing over saltwater is so unlikely that it only happened once for each land. Another scenario is that once a first group of cichlids arrived at a new place and underwent adaptations to it, they then prevented, through interspecific competition, new cichlids from immigrating. Either way, the greatest diversity of extant cichlids is currently found in Africa, specifically East Africa. In the same way that South America and Africa drifted apart from each other, Africa is itself being pulled apart by tectonic forces, a process called rifting. In East Africa, there are three rifting events simultaneously occurring, forming valleys, called rift valleys, and within these rift valleys form deep freshwater lakes. The most well-known of these lakes are Victoria, Malawi, Tanganyika, and Kivu, which collectively have over 1,000 species of cichlids. Genetic evidence clearly points to Lake Victoria's cichlids having immigrated from the much smaller and older Lake Kivu. However, Lake Kivu only has 15 species of endemic cichlid, while Lake Victoria has over 500. The cichlids of Lakes Victoria, Albert, Edward, and Kivu, and other lakes in the same region form a monophyletic clade called the Lake Victoria Region Superflock. It consists of some 700 species. These exhibit a diverse array of coloration and behaviors, and occupy different habitats, often with highly specialized diets. Some scrape algae off of the rocks, while others consume zooplankton or insects or fish eggs, 
Some hunt other fish, and some are parasites that eat the scales off of other fish. This clade is famous among evolutionary biologists for exhibiting the fastest adaptive radiations known among vertebrates. The entire superflock originated from a common ancestor about 100 to 200,000 years ago, and the radiation that led to the 500 species of Lake Victoria cichlids took place only within the last 15,000 years. This raises the question, what explains the tendency of these fish to diversify and adapt so rapidly? This is likely due in part to the unique environment. As mentioned before, the region is an active rifting zone. The river and lake systems are continuously changing over thousands of years. New rivers form and others disappear, and the water level within lakes fluctuates in response to the climate as well. The tendency of the lake to drop and then refill has likely contributed to cichlid speciation. A once continuous population becomes splintered into multiple smaller lakes during dry periods, and the cichlids may undergo separate selective pressures while isolated. When the lake level rises again thousands of years later, the cichlids are then too different genetically to interbreed. This process may have occurred cyclically for the last 100,000 years, inciting radiation after radiation of cichlids. This is exactly what happened in Lake Victoria. Sediments from Lake Victoria appear to indicate that the lake experienced drying and refilling corresponding to the glacial and interglacial periods. During the last glacial maximum of 19 to 27,000 years ago, the lake appeared to have dried up completely, only to refill 17,000 years ago. This would explain why the adaptive radiation within Lake Victoria occurred within the last 15,000 years. But how did they manage to evolve into 500 species in such a short time? One intriguing explanation is the hybrid swarm hypothesis, which proposes that ancient hybridization events led to the founding of a new population with a large degree of genetic diversity without the need for mutations. Genetic diversity is obviously important without which selective evolution cannot occur. Several studies have produced results that corroborate this hypothesis. In 2017, Meyer et al. concluded that the Lake Victoria region superflock originated via hybridization between two divergent lineages 150,000 years ago, one from the Congo drainage system and one from the Upper Nile drainage system. They also concluded that this hybridization event facilitated the rapid evolution of this clade by providing genetic variation that subsequently became recombined and sorted into many new species. The same research team also published a paper in 2023 showing that the recent radiation 15,000 years ago in Lake Victoria started with the hybridizations between at least three lineages, which survived in swamp refugia when the lake dried up. They conclude that repeated cycles of hybridization and diversification likely explain the propensity of these cichlid fish to undergo rapid adaptive radiations. Lake Malawi too has some thousand species of cichlids and they seem to have radiated in a series of steps. First, a split occurred based on habitat. Lake Malawi cichlids reside either in sand or rocky substrates. Then niche differentiation within those habitats seems to have occurred as cichlids specialized on different food sources leading to different morphologies. Finally, closely related cichlids with similar morphology have differentiated along various color axes, representing the action of sexual selection. Sexual selection is typically strong among African cichlids. Popular aquarium cichlids like the peacock cichlid, Alanacara, are highly sexually dimorphic. A major reason for this appears to be that many African cichlids are female mouth brooders, meaning that females hold juveniles in their mouths for a time shortly after their hatching. Females put in all of the parental investment to the offspring while males merely contribute genetic material. Therefore, females are incentivized to only select high-quality males. How do females know which males are high-quality? Their colors. Many male cichlids also build bowers to impress females, which are directly selected by female choice. As for Lake Tanganyika, one interesting observation of its cichlids has been their degree of convergent evolution. A robust phylogenetic analysis of the Tanganyika cichlids indicated that morphology does not directly correlate with relatedness. Instead, the clades overlap a fair bit in their morphology. Indeed, 122 species pairs overlap in body shape and 132 species overlap in lower pharyngeal jaw shape. 
In the case of Neolamprologus prochilus and Tenochromus benthicola, the convergence is so strong that even local fishermen cannot tell them apart. What could be the reason for this? Explanations for why there is so much convergence tend to focus on either a limited number of available niches or developmental constraints that limit the possible adaptive routes that cichlids can take. On the opposite side of the Atlantic Ocean, Central and South America have around 600 species. The greatest diversity of New World cichlids occurs in Central America, where many of them were unfortunately grouped in the former wastebasket taxon Cichlosoma. Recent phylogenetic analyses have broken up this genus into many genera, including the only cichlid found in the USA, the Rio Grande cichlid, Herichthys cyanogutatus. Further, the saltwater tolerance of cichlids has allowed them to colonize Caribbean islands. For example, the New World genus Nandopsis has colonized Cuba and Hispaniola, and the fossil cichlid Cichlosoma woodringi is known from the Miocene of Hispaniola around 15 million years ago. To end this episode, I would like to quote a paragraph from Walter Salzberger's review paper that aptly summarizes the cichlid's tale. Quote, The species flocks of cichlid fish in the East African Great Lakes, Victoria, Malawi, and Tanganyika represent the most species-rich and phenotypically diverse adaptive radiations in vertebrates and are characterized by exceptionally fast diversification rates. To put cichlid radiations into a temporal context, during the evolutionary time span of our own species, starting with the split between chimpanzees and humans some 5 to 7 million years ago, approximately 2,000 species of cichlid fish evolved in East Africa, the geographic region where the chimpanzee-human split initially occurred. Within the time span that it took for 14 species of Darwin's finches to evolve on the Galapagos archipelago, about 1,000 cichlid species evolved in Lake Malawi alone. In addition, since the last ice age, which is when sticklebacks began to diverge into replicate species pairs in the northern hemisphere, hundreds of cichlid species evolved in Lake Victoria. Close quote. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.